Hi guys, Nick here with BitGalaxis bringing you a new Blender tutorial video and today we're going to cover baking a normal map. Now this process can be somewhat complicated so we're going to cover some basics before we start in the tutorial. Um, so let's just get into it. First of all, what is a normal map? A normal map is a texture map that can give the appearance of additional geometry or details on the flat surfaces. They often look like a combination of blue, purple, and pink when seen just as a JPEG. And they can also be used to make a low poly mesh appear high poly um, and even make some low poly meshes look like they're smoother than they really are. Um, and on the right, you can see what a normal map typically looks like when viewed just as a JPEG. And this is an example from opengameart.org. Normal maps complement diffuse maps. Diffuse maps show the color data but a good diffuse map will still only look like a painting on a flat surface without normal map. So on the right, you can see our diffuse map from opengameart.org is just a brick wall. If we were to put this on a flat surface, it would still look flat. So the diffuse map gives us the color. That's what you actually typically see. But a normal map will give it depth and texture. You won't see the blues and purples. What it will do is provide the shading and lighting data so that when you walk by it, you actually feel like it has a 3D texture. But some things to know before we start out in Blender in regards to the processes. The first thing you need to understand is the process of baking. And that's a process of saving the results of a previous render. You know in Blender that you render a scene, but we can actually render something to reuse the results later. Baking is an efficient process. So when parts of a full render are always going to look the same, we can pre-render those to be used later. Now, we actually kind of hijack that process to bake our normal map. So as an example, it's like taking a picture of a render and then opening in that picture again when needed instead of re-rendering every time. So why not do that for objects that always look the same? Materials. We do need to apply a material to our model in Blender but not just to show our final product. Materials give us access to the shader editor, which is the tool we need to bake. So I will open materials when we don't even have any to apply yet. Why? Because materials is my key to the tools we need to process baking. So let's get into the baking process. Okay, so here we are in Blender, and I have this cube-shaped model that I've created. And I've basically just taken a six-sided cube and added some details, cut out some of the corners or the edges here, um, added some grooves, added a speaker-like thing to it. And what we're going to do is bake some of this detail into a normal map so that we can apply it to our low-poly cube. And so this low-poly cube is what we're going to be putting a lot of work on. Um, but one thing you need to make sure you do, it's not necessary here because it's a very simple model, but you need to make sure you've got your UV unwrapped on your model. With the six-sided cube, it's going to be so simple that Blender will do that fine for us. And you actually don't have to do this on the model at all. Um, the UV unwrapping will, you know, however Blender does this automatically, even on complex models, the, the baking is still going to apply it appropriately. However, if you have a complex model and you're going to be doing other work to it, you want to make sure you do this UV unwrapping first. Otherwise, you're going to have to rebake it with a new wrap. So if we go back into modeling, we also want to make sure that our low poly model, the cube, has a material. So we're going to go ahead and just make a new material and we're going to call it normal map and now we have the material as i stated in the intro we don't need the material yet because we don't actually have anything to apply to it but we do need to use the tools that having that material will give us access to and what that gives us access to if we click on the shading tab up here is the shading editor or the shader editor so what we do need to do is Somewhere in the blank area here, press Shift A to add texture and an image texture. And we'll add that here. And I had already made a normal map earlier and, and processed that when I was setting up this video, 
but I'm going to go ahead and say uh, we're going to add a new texture or new image, and we're going to call this um, cube normal map. And you can change the height and width. Just know that the higher the number is, the more detail you're going to get. But it's also going to increase the size of your file considerably. So there's that balance you have to think about is how big is this normal map going to be and how much detail do I want? Um, if you don't have enough detail, it'll look blocky and pixelated. Um, and too much, you're going to have a massive file. So it really kind of depends on uh, your needs. Uh, you can leave the rest. If you think there's something to modify, you can modify it. Um, and so uh, you can say like 32-bit float here, tiled, whatnot. Um, but I'm just going to, I don't really ever change any of this. I don't have to. I just say, okay. And now we have this blank image here. So what's going to end up happening with this blank image is once we bake it, we're actually going to see the process is going to put the image, the normal map, onto this. Um, but what we have to do here on this image texture that we've added, we need to make sure we go into our cube normal map and make sure it's selected. We also want to make sure that we are uh, changing the color space to non-color. And that's really all we need for now. Um, so the other aspect that we need to make sure we cover is our high poly model needs to be visible. And now we're going to select both of these. And with both of those selected, you have to also make sure you click low poly first, high poly second. So the low poly should be lighter. And once you've done that, we need to go to this rendering tab up here. And we need to change our render engine. You see all these options we have here. It's not going to give us a baking option, but that's what we need. And we get those options from having this material and having this node selected. We need to change this render engine to cycles. And we then need to go into bake. So under bake, you're going to see bake type combined. We don't want that. We want to go normal because we're making a normal map. And so now we need to select what we're baking, right? So again, remember baking is we're pre-rendering something. So we're selecting these options. Um, that's where we selected. Uh, we're going to say selected to active. And now we have some options. So this extrusion and max ray distance are going to change the way our mapping works. It's going to kind of test these dis distances between the surface of the low poly to the high poly. And it's going to kind of just spread out and say, how far out do does our, our mapping, does our, our high poly object go from our low poly object? And then let's find that difference and let's kind of draw that distance or that difference on an image. Um, just to give you an idea, um, you can say max ray distance. Um, that's how far it will go before it stops trying to search for it. So what you do if, if this max ray distance isn't high enough, um, which by, with zero, I think it just goes on and on until it hits something. Um, but if you have like 0.1 and it's really far out there, then you're going to get like this normal map that is like all green. And that means that there is no height data at all um, or all yellow. Um, extrusion is the way that like what it's kind of like is it's kind of like a cage. You can specify a cage and that cage is like an object. And then that object is going to reach in until it hits something. And it's going to say, okay, that's the actual normal map. I don't care what the shape of the original object is. We're going to draw it as if, as if we see it from this perspective. So you can kind of distort the images a bit that way. Um, but we're not going to use a cage because extrusion kind of does the same thing only with the existing model shape. So in this case, if you increase your extrusion and then you say max ray distance is 0 0.01, just like I have here, you make them the same, you can now bake. And since I baked that, you can see we have this image here. So what I want to do is just apply it to the model in Blender. And the way that we do that is we need to go shift A again here. And we're going to click on a vector this time. And we're going to say normal map. Now we have this cube normal map 
this is what we're selecting. And we're going to take that color and drop it to this color. And it's going to be normal. And we're going to output it to normal. And now our low poly cube should actually have some of the data. If we were to hide our high poly cube, now we can see that we've got some shading and some texture on our normal mapping uh, from our normal mapping on that cube. So it's not just grayscale um, in this. It kind of looks like it is, but it really would actually show some lighting data. And to prove that, if we go into modeling and we go into rendering mode, if we rotate that, um, and we do it around Z, you can see that some of the shading and modeling changes. So you do get some of that 3D effects. And so if we escape this and we press just F12 to render, which you won't see, I have it on my other screen. I'll bring it up though. You can see now in the actual render, if I can bring it over, the actual render does look pretty darn good. It actually kind of looks 3D in the actual render instead of the live preview. Um, and so if you were to apply that like into a game engine or things like that, it would look like those details. Now you can see it's not perfect. I cut corners out of my cube and I tried to apply them to a corner and it looks pretty good. Like to honestly, it does look like a flat surface, but you can kind of tell there's an edge there, right? But that does look pretty impressive considering that it's not there, you know, on the high poly model, it's not there at all. And from this perspective, if it weren't for that line, you almost wouldn't notice. You would think that it really is just a cutout edge. So, um, so really that normal map does work. Um, it looks, it looks pretty dang good to be honest with you. Um, so when we have it just sitting there, this part here doesn't work well in the preview, but in the final render, it does look like there's some actual depth there. So, now that we have that, we're done. That really is the entire process. Now that you do have this image on a normal map, you can export this from Blender and use it in another program. And the process is as simple as going to this little hamburger menu, clicking on image, and then saving as. So you click on this, it's gonna bring up a file dialog. You save it wherever you wanna put it. It's gonna be a PNG file then you can take that PNG file and put it into another program such as Unity or Unreal or wh whatever program you want to use. So if you have another cube, you can apply this normal map and you can get a cube that looks like this from that, um, even though it only has six sides. And again, that process is just click the hamburger menu, go to image, save as, and then you can put that wherever you want for use in other programs. You'd also want to add, again, a diffuse map to give it some detail, but that's the overall process. And I hope this made sense to you, but if you guys have questions on that process or why we do things, just leave a comment. Anyway, that's it for today. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you next time.